need a spiritual father. You don't need a mentor. People are always asking me, and they just asked me again at the pastor's lunch, and what about mentors? Where is mentor in the Bible? It's just not in the book. You can take a word and then start attaching scriptures to a word that doesn't come from the Bible. Now you have a job description that somebody made up, and you have purposes that somebody made up, and you have execution that somebody made up, but none of it flows from the Word. But spiritual fathers is in the Word. And some of you young people, please forgive me, I don't say this to be rude, but, but some of you just need to get over your rebelliousness, forgive me, and understand that you need a spiritual father. You need to get over your pride, you need to get over your arrogance, you need to get over your testosterone, and understand that you need a spiritual father that will love you and that you can talk to and that will help you grow and be successful in life. Now Paul was very clear about this. He said in 2 Timothy 1 verse 13, he said, Timothy, what you have heard from me, keep as a pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Philippians 3 verse 17, join with others in following my example, brothers. And take note of those who live according to the pattern we gave you. Philippians 4, 9. What you ever who have learned and received and heard from me or seen in me, put into practice. So Paul said, as you live with your spiritual father and you, you hear the teaching and you, you see their life, he said, those are the things, those are patterns that, that are being set for you, patterns of success. Patterns of what? And now, any, anybody can be Uncle Joe who comes in from the province and acts like Santa Claus for the weekend, you know, the, the, the bullock by an uncle who comes into town and he's got presents for everybody and everybody goes out to eat at Max's Chicken and everybody's all happy that uncle is in town. But, you know, visiting uncle isn't going to help you when you need, you're in trouble. Your father, who's there every day, who may not be as fancy and flashy, but he's going to be there for you. So young pastors, you need a spiritual father that you will be in relationship with. This is not about submission. This is not about giving money to them. This is not about kissing the ring. You know, all this polit these bishops who are just nothing but religious politicians kiss my ring. Bow down and kiss my foot. I mean, I'm not going to kiss your foot. I might wash your feet, but I'm not going to kiss your foot. Are we still here? But we need spiritual fathers that will love us and help us. But now, how do you prepare for receiving? How do you prepare for understanding something? The servant says, we don't have anything to offer. Uh, Saul replied, even our food is gone, and we don't have a thing to give. Eighth verse. Well, the servant said, I have one small silver piece. We can at least offer it to the man of God and see what happens. Most people look at how much the offering was. You follow when an offering's taken. But God doesn't look there. He looks somewhere else. He looks at how much is left. Do you understand what I mean? How much do you have left? That is uh, the size of your offering. See, the Queen of Sheba, she didn't go home destitute. She went home to something bigger than what she gave. And Saul went home with his donkeys. Prosperity came to both of them. You, you follow what I'm saying? But you have to watch because it's very easy to give an amount of money that seems like a lot. But what you really need to give is an amount that's significant. That word significant, one of the, one of the definitions is a person or a thing to be taken note of. A significant offering. Th think a little bit more. Remember the day, remember the day that uh, the prophet came into the city and the woman was there and this where the little food she was baking for her son. First thing she asked for was water. The prophet asked for was water. You remember that? He said, fetch me some water. And he, he, she just hands him the water. Now, let me say this. The water was valuable, okay? Valuable, valuable. In a drought, the water is always valuable. But then he's, nothing happens. God doesn't move. You'd think, boy, here's something valuable. Something should happen. But then he notices in her house that there's a little cake baking. And she said, make me a little of that cake. And she said, oh, no, that's precious. The water's valuable, but that cake is precious. It's for my dying son. It's his last meal. Now, the little widow, you remember, with the two mites? She gave all that she had, even all her living. And then what does it say? Why she did it? Why was her gift more than others? 
because she gave of her want. Now watch, most people are trying to say that that means poverty, that want, but the word also means of something that she desired. She desired something and God said she'll have it. Luke 14 and verse 23. It says, and the Lord said to the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. So this is a word, a Greek word. It means to necessitate. It's translated necessitate, constrain, force, push, use threats entreaties to do something amen so this beautiful word is a word that i believe should guide the way we work for the lord anakazo this is a greek word it means and to necessitate the bible says he sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, come, for all things are now ready. Come. All through the Bible you hear this word, come. Come. God is inviting people now to come. So come. Come to God. Come to Jesus. Come to church. Come to the Spirit. Come to God. Now, this invitation is for a season because a time is going to come there'll be no more invitation you see jesus said go out to the streets to the lanes to different people you see and this one is even talking about like a different type of person that's why we are barren that's why they small this church is small and it's shrinking anywhere you see christianity is not prevailing it is usually because christians didn't go there yeah <laughs> it's not safe it's not this it's not many reasons the christians don't want to go there but jesus said go to the highways huh and the hedges and look at the word and compel them to come in now the word compel is the word anakazo compel them drive them we are too gentle. That word means to drive. It means to necessitate. It means, Paul said, I am going to turn the Gentile, the heads of the Gentiles from darkness to light. He will turn their heads. He will turn the head from darkness to light. You need compelling power. You need to visit people. And hold them by hand and say, come on, today we are going to church. We need to have invasions of communities. You can't sit down with your gentle way of, if you like to come, come. <laughs> we have a nice Jesus, if you like him, you can come. No. As an akazo. Force them to come in. Yeah. Drive them in. <laughs>